In our last video, we started working with XML in Scala. We were loading in our grade XML file. We have the file over here. We had started making a case class. We had loaded in the file and we had pulled out the course name, but we really want to be able to pull out these students. Pretty much as soon as I finished the last video, I realized that this is not a sufficient case class for this file. This case class would have worked just great for the flat text file, but the fact that we actually have comments on things here means that it's not really sufficient for what we're doing in this case. So instead, I'm going to make another case class here called a grade, and a grade is just going to have a value, which is an int, and a comment, which is a string. And so our quizzes, assignments, and tests are going to not be a list of int, but a list of grade. So that every single one will have both a value and a comment associated with it. If we don't write any comment, the comment will just be an empty string. Okay. Previously, when we would load, for example, CSV files in, we would write a function that looked something like this. We'd write a parse line, and it would take a line that was a string, and it would give us back whatever it was that we were reading. I want to do something similar here. I want to make a student from a node. So what do I pass into this? Well, I'm going to pass in a node. I'll call it n. Node is a name used in the XML libraries. We've seen elem, we've seen node sequence. The node is more general than an element. Uh, turns out that it can represent other sub parts of this, but it's only one of them, whereas the node sequence can be a large number of nodes. And we want to give back from this a student. So we're going to build up a student from here. Okay. How am I going to do this? Well, the way we've often written this type of code is we will re create variables for each of the things that we want. And then we can build a student from those. So for example, f name, l name, quizzes, assignments, tests. And before we get there, we have to create variables for each of those things. So we start with f name. That's fairly easy. We're just going to take this node and we're going to search inside of it for the attribute f name and we'll get the text value of that. If we don't put dot text here, then f name will have the type node which uh, actually type node sequence because the slash can potentially find multiple things and that's not what we want. So we need to put in the text to basically get the string value of whatever was stored out of it. You don't want to use two string. In the case of the attribute, the two string might be fine, but for example, when we had our course name here, if we didn't call dot text, if we called dot two string, a dot two string would have been a string with that entire contents, and we only wanted the text that was inside of it. Turns out the last name is basically going to do the same thing, but it's going to search for an attribute called L name. And now we need quizzes, assignments, and tests. And each of these is going to be a list of a grade type. We have to parse out these grade types, and so it seems to me that it would be helpful to write another function, grade from node, that is supposed to take a node like the quiz with the grade or the assignment with the grade and the comment, and it's going to build a grade object for us. This one's actually pretty simple, so we're not gonna create separate variables. The value is for all of these we called it grade. So we're going to take our n and slap and search for at grade. I want to pull the text off of that and they're all integers. So I'm going to call dot two int 
we say that this has to be an int, so that should work nicely. Then we need to get the comment. Well, the comment, the way that this XML file has been written, is just the text of the node itself. So if it were this assignment, the text part would be that, and that would be our uh, comment that we wanted to store. So now that we have that, we can try to make quizzes. And this starts off the way you would expect. Inside of our node, we're going to search for elements called quiz. And that gives us back a node sequence. And in this case, though, the node sequence might have multiple values in it, like here. We're going to get back three values. We're going to get back a node sequence with three things. What do we want? Well, we want a list of grade. So I need to turn each one of those nodes in the node sequence into a grade. Fortunately, we have a function that does that. And so to do that to everything, we call map. So we're going to map each of these nodes to grade from node. And that would give us a sequence of nodes. But we specifically say that we need a list. So I'm going to call to list. The assignments and the tests will be very similar. So instead of searching for quiz here, we'll search for assignment. We're going to map it across the same function and then convert to a list. And then we'll search for test inside of there. How do we use this function? Well, we're going to take our XML data. So we'll say students equals our XML data. We're going to search inside of it for elements called student. And then we need to map, because once again, this is going to give us back a node sequence. It's going to be that node, followed by that node, followed by the next node. And But I want an array of my student type. So I'm going to map that to student from node. And then I'm just going to convert that to an array. We can see if it works by doing students for each print line. See how many typos I have. It should print out CS1. And there we go. So I have a student who is John Doe, who has a list for the assignments, or for the quizzes, grade 88, no comment, 73, no comment, 95, no comment. The Assignments, though, have comments that are attached to each of the grades. So this shows you how we can not just load in the XML, but parse through it and create case classes that then we would want to work with inside of our application using the searching inside of the XML document.